Phoning Home is a beautiful survival game with an interesting overall story and concept that I wanted to enjoy so badly, but the goddamn game just won't let me. First, let's introduce our characters to give you a bit of context before we discuss the bullshittery that I've experienced in the 11 hours that I spent in the game. This is Ion. He looks like Wally. Who looks like Johnny Five? Who looks like Omnibot 2000? You get the point. He's a silent explorer shipwrecked on a strange planet along with his ship's AI, TR2, who acts as your voice tutorial and overall story driving narrator and guide. Now, Ion requires the following things to survive. Fuel for your rocket jump, energy cells for your weapons, gadgets, and sprint ability, and the occasional repairs should you take any damage. Now, like any good open world survival game, you can run around and scrounge up parts and materials to build just about whatever you need, and once you discover a type of material, it shows up in your compass whenever there's more of it in the vicinity. Now, your inventory works as follows. You can carry 14 different items simultaneously, whether they're raw or crafted materials, and you can carry what seems to be about 10 of each raw material, the exception being Tetrarium, which is a quest item that you collect throughout the game. Down here, you see different gadgets and such that Ion has access to, but only when TR2 sees fit, unlock them for you throughout your journey, which is a really weird tech gating system, honestly. Now, since the gadgets don't spoil anything, let's go over a few. First off, a pipe. You swing it at things. If you're ever in a position where you need this, you're probably pretty well fucked because the only thing stopping you from using literally anything else is energy. And if you don't have energy, then you're probably loading up an old save because without energy, there's no sprint. And in a game where you're traveling vast distances between objectives, why bother? Load an old save, go dig up some resources to make another energy cell, and then continue on your way. Next up, a teleporter. It only works on metallic objects or exposed metal or veins, and is overall rarely useful except at points where they require you to use it to port to places your thruster can't get you to. Also, suffers from the third-person camera crossfire plague where your shots don't exactly line up, making it near impossible to target distant objects to make terrain less miserable. That's the most important part, I think, because especially here in this open desert, I could cross this thing by shooting the buoys and basically, you know, shoot, shoot a buoy, shoot the one next to me, and then boom, teleport. Save myself a little bit of time crossing this desert here. But because the aim is so bad, it's worth it to save the energy and just walk. Then you have, of course, your basic blaster, the ability to carry Ani, as you'll see a lot of, and you will do a lot of in this game. Uh, then a light probe that's good for distracting certain enemies, but you never really use it in early game because these guys die in a couple shots anyway, so it's not worth wasting your time. And then you have this weird looking cloak thing that, uh, I, honestly, I have no idea how it works. Now, everything is fine, and then you meet Ani. She, too, is stranded on this planet, and the two of you team up to try to discover a way to get off of it and back home. She has a unique ability of being able to sense a certain type of rare collectible material that you need in order to achieve this task. Of course, of course, she's the only one that could sense this stuff. Ani, I can't read your signal. She also has a plasma pistol and a non-existent fuse when it comes to conflict and will start shit with things much, much bigger than she is if you aren't careful. Unfortunately though, she's not made of the best stuff and needs the following. Shelter when it rains to prevent corrosion. Shelter when it's windy to prevent corrosion. Constant coating to slow corrosion in general. She needs to be carried around most terrain. You need to wait for her all the time because she's generally unbearably slow. If you don't wait for her to get close enough when you use a world portal, you will actually lose her and have to go back, which wouldn't be that big of a deal, except world portals are one way only, and getting back to an area can require some 30 minutes of trekking. The Ani character herself is actually quite endearing and kind of nice to have around on this beautiful yet lonely planet, but all that is diminished by the constant care required to prevent her from corroding because the more corrosion she accumulates, the less maximum health she's able to reach, and you know that by the time you get to the end of this game, she's gonna have like 5% health and she's gonna be dying constantly and you're gonna hate yourself, which is probably why there's like 50 save slots here, because they want you to be able to go back, you know, 10 hours or so when you first made the mistake of allowing her to corrode on accident because you left her out in the desert while you accidentally took a portal and you couldn't get back in time to prevent her from corroding down to 50% or whatever. The game goes from an exciting adventure on an unknown planet with bizarre plant life, giant alien creatures and abandoned ruins and technology to the never-ending escort quests of our nightmares. 
I am currently 11 hours and some change into the game, and it's I'm at a point where they're telling me to go to a certain, go find a portal. Okay, now I've I've gone in so many portals, and I've been saving, and then once I realize that that portal's a dead end, I end up going back because, like I said, portals are one way, and so I had to load up a save to go back to where I was before and try a different route, and I am actually stuck. And the, and, and the thing that sucks is that the different route is like an additional 15 minutes, you know, trek, 15 to 30 minute trek across a desert, uh, trying to make your way up a mountain line, uh, or maybe perhaps uh, exploring a handful of villages. And it's never, it's never just, okay, is it a left of this path or right of this path? There's no way to actually know. You have a marker that shows up on your compass. And once that marker disappears, you have to figure out, is it because I am where I need to be? Or is it because I went in the wrong portal, even though it told me to go into that portal? Do you see how frustrating this is? And I'm really upset. You can tell that I'm really upset, right? Like Because I, I really loved these characters. I loved the environments. I loved the story. I loved the way everything was unfolding. I was dealing with the uh, escort mechanics to begin with, and I was just putting up with it. You guys know I have a lot of patience for bullshittery, but this game pushed me, pushed it over that limit for me. Uh, and really, I, honestly, I'm just gonna go and watch a Let's Play uh, to see how the game unfolds uh, and to see where the rest of it goes, because I can't be bothered with spending Hours and hours backtracking, backtracking because the game is not quite clear enough on what it is I need to do and because I need to carry around Hani everywhere because she just can't fucking do anything on her own except fuck up these gigantic sandworms which she's really great at she's just look at her face she's into it man that's like the only thing she can do though fuck but the soundtrack is pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> let's just let's just shift gears here really quick. No, the soundtrack is actually really good and plays well within within the atmosphere of the game. And since you spend so much time walking around and experiencing things, getting into little fights here and there, the combat the combat is really nothing to write home about, but it works. But when you do get into some kind of a fight, uh, the, the music does shift to reflect that. A lot of times, actually, when things are sneaking up on you, the music kind of gives things away, but that's fine. Uh, other than that, though, it's the music is actually quite good uh, and worth a listen if you're into game soundtracks. But the game itself does still need quite a bit of attention before I pick it up again. Honestly, I will probably, I already found a Let's Play on YouTube uh, where I will probably watch the remainder of what's left in the game because I am interested in the story. And I do feel like I've paid my dues by purchasing the game. So if you do decide to go down that route, please purchase the game uh, before you go through and watch an entire Let's Play series. That applies to pretty much everything. But I can't really recommend playing the game in its current state. And if that changes, great, I'll make an update. But until then, this is the BFF Report. My name is Mike BAK Phony. Next up is For Honor. Stay tuned.